Which route would you rather bike on? This one? Or this one? Hey everyone, I'm Tom and this is Shifter, a channel about urban cycling and bike commuting. And what you just saw are two examples of what are sometimes called bikeways or neighborhood greenways. Designated routes through usually sort of residential or suburban neighborhoods are intended to be safe, easy routes for riding your bike through. But in reality, when these routes get implemented, there can be a wide range of what they can look like. In some cases, they are safe and accommodating and make for amazing bike rides. And in some cases, they are done to make it look like the city has done something for cyclists when they haven't actually done anything. So, real bikeways versus fake bikeways. And today, that's what we're going to explore. And just to make this comparison a little more scientific or maybe quasi-scientific, we'll play a game of plus one minus two, meaning for every piece of infrastructure that makes my life as a cyclist easier, it's plus one. For everything that makes it harder, it's minus two. That way we'll have a number to compare at the end of all this. So the first bikeway we're going to explore is here in my city of Calgary. And so last night I got out my handy paper map of the city's bikeways and bike routes, and it actually was really hard to find a connected bikeway that would actually take me somewhere. So. I've identified a route here. Uh, it's got some ins and outs, and it's got a mix of things, a mix of routes that the city calls uh, neighborhood greenways and bicycle routes. So it'll be a bit of a mix. Uh, it will take me from here downtown out a little bit uh, into the suburbs to a shopping mall. So at least there's a destination, but it's a bit disconnected. Hopefully we'll make it. I may have to stop and pull my map along the way. Let's give it a shot. All right, here we go. We are starting downtown on this nice, separated, safe bike lane. But that's not what this video is about, so we will just skip right ahead to the next part. Okay, this was supposed to be a bikeway according to my map. But look at this, it's since been converted into a proper bike lane. Well, not that relevant, but I'm giving it a plus one anyway. Good job, city. Okay, now we are finally on what is called a bikeway but it looks kind of like a regular street, doesn't it? Yeah, there's nothing here to make it even attractive or safe to cyclists, so I'm giving our first moment of a bikeway a minus two. All right, the bikeway turns left here, according to the signs and the map, but this is a pretty busy road. Look at that, lots of cars, no accommodation for cyclists. These cars were going pretty quickly, so minus two here again. Oh. There it is. Did you see it or did you blink? There was a blue sign there indicating a bikeway. All right, plus one for a blue sign. Okay, I'm dropping a minus two here. This is like the fifth or the sixth block of this alleged bikeway. And I've yet to see anything to make it easier for cycling other than a blue wayfinding sign or two and a line on a map. So it's basically nothing, minus two. Okay, I'm giving this a minus two for wayfinding. This alleged bikeway is zigzagging all through this neighborhood. The only way to find your way is using the map or occasional blue signs, but it makes no sense. It's not a straight line. It's jumping all over the place. So minus two for wayfinding. Plus one. I can't believe I'm giving this decrepit, crumbling, old, narrow, pedestrian bridge a plus one, but at least it's getting me over this freeway. And after all those blocks of alleged bike lanes that were actually just residential roads, this feels like a bit of a treat, so plus one. Plus one, this is not a bikeway, it's a multi-use pathway, but it's connecting to bikeways, and I didn't have to ride five kilometers out of my way just to get to it, so, yeah, why not? Plus one. Just in case you were wondering why my sleeves just disappeared, uh, I took my jacket off. I had to stop and take my jacket off. But I'm giving it a minus two because the reason I stopped was not because I was hot, but because I had to check the map again because the wayfinding is so bad. I know I already gave it minus two, but it's so bad I'm giving it minus two again. Okay, we're onto a different piece of infrastructure now. This is what the city calls a neighborhood greenway. So I'm very excited to try this out. And then, oh no, 
it's just a share out. Look at the sign on the road there. Shared right of way. Oh, sad trombone. Sharrows are the worst. There might even be worse than the worst. They're actually, they don't do anything for anyone. They just confuse people. But, oh, look at that. Look at that sign. That sign actually said single file. One of the problems with sharrows is that studies have shown that they're misunderstood by both cyclists and motorists, along with road signs that say things like share the road. But a sign like that that says single file, well, that's a little bit clearer. So I'm going to give minus two for the Shero, plus one for the somewhat clear signage. I'm going to give a plus one for these giga speed bumps, these giant slow speed bumps. They do slow vehicles down and actually they're not that bad for cyclists. It's just like going over a little hill rather than those little narrow ones that are like shock absorbing on your spine. So plus one for that. Ooh, plus one, look at this, a roundabout, or as we say here in Canada, a roundabout. These are pretty good because I like how they slow car vehicles down, but they don't have much impact on me as a cyclist. So plus one for that. Wow, minus two, I guess, uh, see that car that just passed me? I guess somebody didn't read the single file sign, hey? This is actually the second or third vehicle that's passed me on this alleged neighborhood greenway in which cars are supposed to be single file with cyclists. And I guess the fact that the drivers don't pay attention is probably a sign of failure. So minus two for that. And that's it. I guess I'm off the neighborhood greenway. Yeah, that was it. So the neighborhood greenway was, drum roll please, a couple of speed bumps and a roundabout. Yeah, I'm underwhelmed. Minus two. I'm stopping to check the map here because the map said this route is supposed to be a multi-use pathway but it sure looks like a sidewalk to me but I double checked it and no it says multi-use pathway so well let's give it a go yeah so this is not a regular sidewalk it seems slightly more wide than a typical sidewalk in this city but also it's not really a multi-use pathway so it's confusing and I'm just glad there's no pedestrians here because I feel like Pedestrians might be getting mad at me. Oh yeah, look at these little cutouts. Clearly made for bikes or I guess maybe wheelchair, but I'm just confused by this, so minus two. Yeah, to be honest, I'm circling around here because I'm kind of lost. I mean, I know where I'm going, but I feel like I lost the plot on the neighborhood greenway or bikeway here. I'm just trying to find it again. Bad wayfinding. I'm not taking more off. I feel like I've punished them enough for wayfinding. Just explaining myself. So I'm pretty much at my destination. It's just across this road here. But look where I am now. I'm stuck between a choice of either riding on a busy road with motor vehicles or riding in the pedestrian space illegally on the sidewalk. So I'm almost there, but I'm giving a minus two for the Sophie's choice of the urban bike commuter. Illegal sidewalk riding or dangerous car road driving. I'm choosing the sidewalk. Sorry, pedestrians. I love you. Okay, so that was a bikeway in Calgary. Next, for competition's sake, we're going to Vancouver, where I recorded a similar kind of ride on what's known as the Union Adnac Corridor. So wait, definitely a bikeway, definitely a neighborhood greenway. Let's see the difference. Hello Vancouver, here we go. We are starting downtown and yes, that was a some kind of John Lennon Yoko Ono exhibit at the art gallery. But let's get started. Nice bike lane, right? Yeah, this is downtown Vancouver and just like downtown Calgary, there are nice separated bike lanes, which is great, but not that relevant to our conversation today. So let's just skip ahead. Okay, we're finally onto a bikeway after all those miles of bike lanes. Vancouver and your bike lanes. So plus one for a bikeway. Let's get going. And look at this. The first thing I see is a, a bike share docking station used as a barrier to cars. That's pretty great. Plus one for that. I wouldn't 
it's not quite genius. Genius is too strong, it's clever. Plus one uh, for the bikeway and plus one for the bike share docking station as a, an impediment to cars. Okay, we are deep into the Union Adnac uh, uh, route now, corridor, and that was a speed bump uh, similar to the ones in Calgary. I gave it a plus one back in Calgary, so I'll give it a plus one here as well. Good for slowing cars, but having pretty minimal impact on bikes. This is just a slow residential road, similar to what we saw in Calgary, where not a lot of accommodation for cyclists at this point. So I guess in fairness, I should give it minus two. Oh, but look, as soon as I say that, look what we come across. A park that's a cutoff for cars. Cars cannot go through here, but there's accommodation for cyclists. Wow, plus one for that. That is a definitely a nice addition. Plus one for this little cycling shortcut. This is another good little example of just the little ways a greenway can make life better for cyclists while restricting automobile traffic. Plus one. Okay, I'm of two minds about this intersection. This is a really busy road. And there's very little infrastructure to help cyclists get across. But it does have this button that I push and it changes the lights so that I can cross it. So maybe minus two for not great accommodation, but also plus one for at least there's a big button here. Look at this, another traffic slowing measure that lets bikes through, plus one. It's almost like they actually want cyclists to ride here instead of just saying that they've done something for cyclists. Oh look, my favorite type of sign, a sign that restricts traffic and includes the words, except cyclists, plus one. I mean, this road has sharrows, which normally I hate, but when a sharrow is part of a more comprehensive route, they kind of make sense. So against all the things I've ever said bad about sharrows in the past, I'm gonna give them a plus one here with the caveat that they are part of a bigger plan. Look, even those little concrete islands like that, plus one. This is clearly a thoughtful route where somebody has gone through this and planned lots of little things to make it more comfortable for cyclists and less comfortable for people in cars. It makes a huge difference. Plus one. Here's another one of those beg buttons to cross a busy road. I'm kind of meh about these beg buttons, but I am impressed with this neighborhood greenway. So I don't know. I'll give it a plus one. Okay, and we made it to the Lowe's. There we go, a much different experience on this neighborhood greenway in Vancouver than the one in Calgary. Okay, there are the two routes and here are the final scores. And uh, yeah, quite a different experience on both those routes. Um, I was actually a little bit impressed with Calgary's. It was better than I thought it would. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a fake bikeway, but maybe it's more accurate to say kind of a half-hearted bikeway. There's, there's lots of differences, but I think that most of the differences come down to one thing, and that is the idea of completeness. The Vancouver route just felt like a complete route. When you're riding it, it feels like it's for cyclists. I feel like I could trust the infrastructure, trust it to keep me safe. I just felt like I wasn't gonna be abandoned as soon as I, came to the next intersection. And that was the difference here in Calgary. It felt very piecemeal. Um, there were parts of it that were great. There were parts of it that were almost non-existent. A lot of it felt like it was just a blue sign and a line on a map. And so I think a good bikeway is all about being complete. Anyway, hope you learned something from that. I know I certainly did. See you next time.